Today I'm going to show you how to make a quick and dirty single channel remote control for your electronic projects using a infrared demodulator and a 555 timer. With the IR demodulator that I have, the middle pin is the ground. It's pin number two. And that's with the little bump facing you. Uh, the pin on the right, which is pin number three, is uh, plus five volts. And the pin on the left is your data or your output pin. This uh, IR receiver that I have will demodulate any infrared signal from a remote that has a carrier frequency of 38 kilohertz. This is the most common. Most of your remotes are going to be 38 kilohertz. So um, if the first remote that you use doesn't work, just try another. This is the output of pin number one on an oscilloscope and I'm just using a remote control that I had gotten from uh, an air conditioner. And as you can see when I press the button, you can see that the signal dips down. It goes from high to low on pin 1 of the demodulator. On your breadboard, you're going to want to make sure that pins 1 and 2 on the demodulator connect to pins 2 and 1 on the 555 timer, respectively. And as you probably know, pins 8 and 4 connect together on the 555 and they also share their power with pin number three on the IR demodulator. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the 555 timer up as a one-shot as a monostable timer and we're going to make it to where when we press the button on the remote control the 555 pin number three which is the output will go high for one second. Now, as we've seen on the oscilloscope, every time we press the button on the remote control, pin number one on the IR demodulator goes low. And that's connected to pin number two on the 555. Well, the 555, when it's in monostable mode, when pin two goes low, the output will go high for 1.1 time constants. Well, what is a time constant? A time constant is um, resistance times capacitance. In my case, I know that I want to use a... 10k resistor so if I have 10k and I want it to turn on for approximately one second I will take one divide that by 10k or 10,000 and that equals a point zero 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 one now and that is actually 100 micro farads because the first three numbers past the decimal are milli and the next three are micro 100 microfarad capacitor and a 10k resistor will give me a time constant of one second so my 555 will go high for 1.1 seconds using these components now the third and final component that I'll be using is a bypass capacitor and that is going to go from pin 5 to ground and it is a 0 0.01 microfarads or 10,000 picofarads same and it has a marking of 103. So the other pin will go to ground, which is pin 1 on your 555. And the resistor goes from pin 8 to pin 7. And pin 7 and pin 6 will connect together. and the capacitor will go from pin 6 or pin 6 and 7 to ground and I'm just using the same ground that I used for or the same part of the breadboard that I used for the ground on the bypass capacitor and there you have it a quick and dirty IR single channel remote that you can use to trigger really anything you want this is another thing that I've made that uh, I suggest everyone have a ton of on hand is just a little resistor that's soldered onto a LED. It comes in handy for testing out things like this. So I will plug the um, anode or the positive part of the LED into pin 3 and the other pin obviously into pin 1 because that's ground. Just getting this thing powered up here. The LED turns on right away. That's a good sign. And pressing the button. And the light turns on every time. 
it should be approximately 1.1 seconds, give or take, you know. I'll post the schematic to my site and uh, give you the link in the description. But uh, there you have it, a quick and easy remote control that you can virtually do anything with. Yard Amusement, dedicated to bringing you the most complete compendium of spare part usage and unusual experimentation on the web. I mustache approved.